Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Aren't we ladies now? Wait till I tell my husband I've become a lady. It is with pleasure that I welcome Our you. Our pleasure, Mr. Clark. Our pleasure. We have many days of hard work ahead of us. Work? I'm not working. I thought we was acting. <laughs> now let me introduce the company. We've all met before, Lieutenant. You could say that we know each other. You could say we've known each other in the dark. It's a theatrical costume. The company is formally introduced to each other, Mrs. Bryan. Mrs. Bryan? Who's Mrs. Bryan? It's the theatrical form of address, madam. You may call me <coughs> Mr. Sideway. If I may proceed. Shh, you're interrupting the director. So we are, Mr. Hangman. The ladies first. The ladies first. Mary Brennan, who is to play Sylvia. Liz Morden, who is to play Melinda. Ducklin Smith, who is to play Lucy, Melinda's maid. Um, um, I'm not playing Liz Morden's maid. Why not? I live with an officer. He wouldn't like it. Just because she is chained up in an old toss pot's garden. Don't you dare talk of my Harry. You're not playing Morden's maid, Smith. You're playing Melinda's. And Debbie Bryant, who is to play Rose, a country girl? From Devon. Screw yours. Salt Beach. That's the ladies. Now, Captain Plume will be played by Henry Cable, who seems to be late. That's odd. I saw him an hour ago, and he said he was going to your hut to learn some lines. Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Sergeant Kite is to be played by John Armstrong, <coughs> who did send a message to say he would be kept at work an extra hour. An hour? You won't see him in an hour. You're not the only one with new wrinkles in your ass, Debbie Bryant. Mr. Worthy will be played by Mr. Sideway. <coughs> I'm here. Justice Balanced by James Freeman. No way. I'm doing a play with a hangman. Words would stick in my throat. You don't have any scenes with him, Smith. Now, I could finish the introduction. Captain Browson is to be played by John Wisehand. The small parts are still to be cut. Now, we can do the first scene until John Arscott appears. It won't be a first scene. <laughs> Brian, will you please be quiet? The second scene, wise hammer, you could read poo. No, I'll read poo myself, so act one thing to Captain Plume and Mr. Worthy. That's me. I'm your commander. The rest of you can watch and wait for this scene. Perhaps we should begin by reading it. No need, Mr. Cock. I know it. Uh, I'm afraid I should have to read Captain Plume. I know that part. Would you like me to do that? I think it's better as I do it. Shall we begin? Kai. That's John Arscott, has just left. Run in. Brian, I'll read the line before word is ended. None at present, tis indeed the picture of worthy, but the life's departed. Sadly, where's he gone? I'm preparing my entrance, Mr. Clark. I won't be a minute. Could you read the line again slowly? <clears throat> tis indeed the picture of worthy, but the life's departed. What? Arms across, Mr. Worthy. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, I forgot. Arms across. I shall have to start again. <laughs> <laughs> Could you read the line again louder, please? What? Arms across, Worthy. My wiper! Someone's buzzed my wiper! There's a white door in this crew, Mr. Clark. What's the matter? There's a picnic <coughs> in the company. Oh, talk of the pop calling the kettle black. My handkerchief. Who's bring my handkerchief? I'm sure it'll turn up sideways. Let's go on. I can't do my entrance without my handkerchief. I've been practicing it all night. If I get my mittens on the run driver, I'll... Would you stop you lunging at this? Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's assume... Well, 
has already oh, entered right. sideways. Now I say, what arms are crossed, worthy? Methinks you should hold them open when a friend so near. I must expel this melancholy spirit. Ah! What are you doing down there, Sadly? I'm being melancholy, sir. I saw Mr. Garrick being melancholy once. That's what he did. Hamlet it was. Oh, oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt. Oh, that this too, too flesh would, solid flesh would melt. Oh, that this too, too... This is a comedy. It is perhaps a little lighter. Try simply to stand normally. <laughs> stand normally and look melancholy. Uh, I'll say the line again. Uh, the audience won't hear Captain Plume's lines if your sobs are so nice. Uh, I'm establishing my melancholy. The comedy needs to move quite fast. In fact, I think we'll cut that line and the two verses that follow and go straight to where it's greeting Plume. I like the word melancholy. A greeting? <laughs> yes, a, a greeting looks like this. <laughs> Clue. Now I'll exchange to say the next words. My dear Captain, that's affection, isn't it? Yes. If I put my hands on, on my heart like this, now. Welcome. I'm not quite sure how to do welcome. I think if you just say the line. Quite. Now. Sideway, what are you doing? I'm checking that. <laughs> I'm checking that you're safe and sound return. That's what the line says. Safe and sound return. You don't need to touch him. You can see that. Yes. Yes. I'll check his his different parts with my my eye. <laughs> um, now I'll put it all together. <clears throat> um, Plume, my dear captain, welcome. Safe and and sound return. Sideway. It's a very good attempt. It's very theatrical. But you could try to be a little more natural. Natural? On the stage, but Mr. Clark. People must. Uh, they must believe you. Garrick, after all, is admired. So he's natural. Of course. I, I, I thought I was being Garrick, but, but never mind. Natural, quite. You're the director, Mr. Clark. Perhaps you could look at me while you were saying the lines. Oh, but the audience won't see my face. The lines are said to Captain Plume. Um, let's move on. Plume says, I escaped safe from Germany, shall we say? Shall we say America? It will make it more contemporary. You can't change the words of the play, right? Mm, well, uh, and sound I hope from London. You see, I have... Caesar, we're rehearsing. Would you... I see that, Monsieur Lieutenant. I see it as a piece of theatre. I have seen many pieces of theatre in my beautiful island of Madagascar, so I have decided to play a piece in your theatre. There's no part for you. There's always a part for Caesar. Oh, <laughs> oh what the parts? Oh, that was you. My, my life. Do carry on. All the parts have been taken. I will play his servant. <laughs> Farquhar hasn't written his servant for worthy. He can have my part. I want to play something else. There is always a black servant in the play, Monsieur Lieutenant. And Caesar is that servant. So now I stand here and just just behind him and I would be his servant. There are no lines for it, Caesar. I speak in French. <laughs> that makes him a more high up gentleman if he has a French servant. And that is good. Now he gets the lady with the black servant. Very chic. <laughs> actually, actually, I would like to rehearse the ladies now. Uh, they have been waiting patiently, and we don't have much time left. Freeman, would you go and see what's happened to Arscott? Sideway, we'll come back to this uh, scene another time. But that was very good, very good. A little, um, a little, uh, but very good. <laughs> now, we will rehearse the first scene between Melinda oh. and Sylvia. Morton and Brennan, if you would come and stand here. Now, the scene is set in Melinda's apartment. Sylvia is already there, so if you stand here, Morden, Oops. and Brenham, you stand facing her here. I'm so bad. Welcome to town, cousin Sylvia. I only do your retreat in the country of shoes when you think so. Your heads are shut as the most irregular place of living. Um, Morden? Wait, I haven't finished yet. Hear me, I smoke noise, scam with affection and pretension, and show everything to the speed and nothing to buy it in the area's autonomy. Morton, you know the lines very well. Thank you, Chili. But you might want to try and act them. 
But let's look at the scene. You're a rich lady. You're at home. Now, a rich lady would stand in a certain way. Try to stand like a rich lady. Try to look at Sylvia with a certain assurance. Assurance. <laughs> Confidence. Like, like this. You've seen rich ladies, haven't you? I well, robbed the sheep. How did they behave? They screamed. I mean, before you robbed them. <laughs> I, I was watching her person. Have you ever seen a lady in her own house? I used to climb into the big houses when I was a girl. I used to jam them. They didn't take anything. I just stood. <laughs> but if it was your own house, you would think it was normal to live like that. It's not normal. It's not all normal when others have nothing. When acting, you have to imagine things. You have to imagine you're someone different. So now, think of a rich lady and imagine you're her. What are you doing? If I was rich, I'd eat myself sick. Me too, potatoes! <laughs> 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 so <I> said... <laughs> oh, what? Roast beef and Yorkshire <laughs> Could we get on with the scene, please, Brennan? It's your turn to speak. Oh, madam, I've heard the town in Dame Frith Air. But you don't consider, Sylvia, how long I have lived it. I believe you would look at her. She did look at me. Didn't she? Uh, she will now. <clears throat> For I can assure you that to the lady, <laughs> the least nice in her constitution, no air can be good above half a year change of air. I take to be the most agreeable of any variety in life. But privy, my dear Melinda, don't put on such an air to me. Excellent, Brennan. You could be a little more sharp on the don't. Don't. Your education and mine were just the same, and I remember the time when we never troubled our heads about air. But when the sharp air from the Welsh mountains made our nose drop in a cold morning at the boarding school. Good, good, modern. Our education, cousin, was the same, but our temperament had nothing about. That's a little better, modern. But you needn't uh, quite so angry with her. Now go on, Brendan. I haven't finished my speech. You're right, modern. Please excuse me. No, no. There's no need for that, Lieutenant. I only meant I don't have to. Please do. You have the constitution of a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Much better, Modern. But you must always remember you're a lady. So, what can what can I do to help you, Lucy? Okay. Oh, that's you, Jacqueline. It's you. <laughs> See, that little piece of wood over there. Take it to Melinda. I'm not fetching nothing for Liz. She's not Morden, she's Melinda, your mistress. You're her servant, Lucy. In fact, you should be in the sea. Now, now take her, that, that fan. Hmm? No. Thank you, Lucy. I do much appreciate your effort. No, you would nod your head. Oh, don't add any words to the player. Now, Lucy, stand, stand behind, Morden. <laughs> what do I say? Nothing. <laughs> How would I know I'm here? Why does she get all the lines? Why can't I have some of hers? Brennan, it's your speech. So far as to be troubled with neither spleen, colic, nor vapours. I need no salt for my stomach, no. <laughs> Major Ross, Kevin Campbell, I'm rehearsing. Rehearsing, rehearsing. <laughs> rehearsing. <laughs> Lieutenant Clark is rehearsing. Lieutenant Clark asked us to give permission, asked us to give prisoners two hours each of rehearse. What's he done with them? What? <laughs> All the things, eh? <laughs> Where are the prisoners, Cable and our Scott, left in? Yeah. They seem to be late. <laughs> While you were well, rehearsing, 